Hi, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be talking about one of my all-time favorite games uh, in a very large collection of games, and this is the DC deck building game. Uh, there's several reasons that I love this game and the reason it keeps coming back to my table. Uh, not the least of which is the fact that my 10-year-old son loves it. It's easy to jump into and play. Setup is a breeze and the rules are simple to explain. So I can bring over somebody that's never played a deck building type of game and we can jump in usually within about 15 minutes of explaining the rules. So today I'm going to break it down. I'm going to show you how to play and I'm going to talk about a expansion that we love that we just got and this is the Birds of Prey. I figured this is a good time because news just hit that the Birds of Prey movie is coming out. Uh, there's a new trailer that just hit with Harley Quinn who is actually not a Birds of Prey so we'll see how that plays out. But that's beside the point. So the DC deck building game is a style of game called a deck builder. Um, when you play a game such as Magic the Gathering, which uh, a lot of card games are compared to, that game you come into the match with a preset deck of cards. Um, you do it before the match starts, you know exactly what's in your deck. With a deck builder, you build your deck as you go along. So the way it starts is you have 10 cards. Everybody starts with the same 10. So here you have vulnerabilities. You get three of those, they're useless. And you have seven punches. They are just above useless. Um, and the currency of the game is power. So what you do is you shuffle your 10 starting cards and you get five of them. And out of these five, that'll be your opening hand. So my five, I get two vulnerability, which do nothing, so boom. And I have three punches. So now I have three power. With this three power, I can choose to upgrade my deck slightly. So uh, you start off with five cards. Uh, this is the main deck. So we have a card that costs two, and you'll see a two right there. A card that costs three, a card that costs five, a card that costs four, and a card that costs three. So I can choose a couple options. I can pick Miss Martian here. Uh, she'll cost me three. I can pick Colonial Suit, or Colony Suit rather. That'll cost me two. Or I can pick Aqualad, which will cost me three. Or I can choose a Kick. Kick is kind of generic but it's a good option in the early game. What a kick will do is give me two power. Uh, Miss Martian gives me one power, but then she has an ability that you can trigger. Um, Colony Suit will give me one power, and that also has an ability that'll trigger an Aqualad. Um, what does he do? You may discard this card from play. If you do, put a card with cost five or less from your discard pile on top of your deck. So he would be uh, awful in the beginning of the game because I don't have anything that I can put on top of my deck. So I would pick what either Miss Martian or Colony Suit or a kick. Let's say I choose a kick. Then in a uh, future hand, all my cards will get shuffled together. So now this has the included kick, uh, which will make my next hand uh, that draws the kick a little more powerful. So let's say one, two, three, four, five. Uh, so I don't have a kick. Again, I have three vulnerabilities and two punches, so now I only have two power. So let's say next hand, four, five. I uh, still, no, there's my kick. So now I have a kick for two power. I have one, two, three, four punches. So now I have six power. So now I can buy something that costs six, which is a little more powerful, and so on and so forth. As you play, your deck becomes more and more powerful. Uh, you can hopefully get some cards that'll allow you to destroy cards and get rid of some of your useless ones. And you're eventually, what you're trying to do is defeat the villains. So this is Harley Quinn. She is a villain. She is not a bird of prey. I just want to make that clarification. Uh, Harley Quinn, villain. So you buy her for eight. She gives you this ability at the start of your turn, rotate a card you control 90 degrees clockwise. So this mechanism of rotating cards is the little uh, shtick that the Birds of Prey expansion pack brings to the game. The core game itself is a lot of fun. Uh, it's a blast. When you start adding the expansions, it really becomes uh, a ton of fun to play. And they add new mechanisms, uh, new mechanics to the game, new ways of doing things, new cards, and so forth. Uh, we have almost all the expansions and almost all the base sets uh, for this game because every time a new one comes out, it just sounds great and we want to buy it. So Birds of Prey, 
Uh, like I said, their big shtick is you can rotate a card. So you have these ongoing cards. So for example, Aqualad, which I mentioned earlier, is an ongoing card. When you draw him, you don't play him. You stick him in front of you, and he stays in play for, throughout the game until you decide to discard him for either the effect that he can choose or uh, you know, a multitude of reasons you would discard him. So you could rotate him. Now, rotating Aqualad doesn't do anything. However, the cards that came with the Birds of Prey will allow you to trigger special abilities when they rotate. So this, for example, Soul Taker Sword, this is Katana. Um, ongoing, when this card rotates upright, you get five power. Five power is huge. Um, five power is just a massive um, amount of power and it'll usually allow you to take down one of these super villains. So the way she would work is you rotate her because of a uh, card that triggers, you rotate her again when you rotate her four times, you get the five power. And also, in addition to her uh, ability, it says each time you buy or gain a villain from the lineup, rotate this card 90 degrees. So as uh, you play the game, uh, villains will start coming out. So here's a villain. I drew him. He was eight from the top. Uh, he is a regular villain that you can buy and use. Uh, so when you purchase him, Soul Taker Sword will rotate. When you do four rotations, uh, boom, you get five power, which is huge. Um, that's the big thing with the um, Birds of Prey expansion. You also get six new heroes. You get Oracle, you get Black Canary, you get Katana, you get Huntress, you get Batwoman, and you get Catwoman. And each of these have their own specific abilities uh, tied in with that Birds of Prey expansion. Uh, they tell you in the rules when you get the expansion to take your main deck. This deck we're using, by the way, is the Teen Titans deck. That's the core deck. Uh, they currently have four core decks. They have the base one, uh, number one, which has uh, the Justice League guys in it. Uh, they have number two, which is Heroes Unite. They have number three, which is Forever Evil. Uh, that one's fun because you get to play as a bad guy. And instead of fighting super villains, you fight superheroes. Uh, and then they have number four, which is this set, and that's the Teen Titans set. Uh, they, they suggest that you use the Teen Titans set with the Birds of Prey, but honestly, you can use any of them with very little difference. So when you have the expansion, you take the cards that they include, you shuffle them in to half of the deck of of the Teen Titans set, the, the main set you're using, you shuffle it into half of it, then you put this half that's shuffled on top. And what that allows you to do is you get a lot more of the expansion cards coming out that you can then play with. Um, overall, I love, uh, I love this expansion. I like the mechanism. It's simple, but it's effective of rotating the cards. Uh, there's also ways you can attack your opponents and rotate their cards the wrong way to make it harder for them to trigger um, and slow them down. And it's just, you know what, it's simple. It's a tiny mechanic, but it's a lot of fun. Um, uh, we played this a couple times. I got absolutely destroyed by my wife. Um, she likes this game. She's not a huge board game person as far as uh, some of these newer kind of strategy games, but she likes this game a lot. Um, because it's simple, but you know what? There's a lot of strategy and there's really ways you can use synergies throughout the game. Uh, and you can kind of go as deep as you want or you can play uh, just buying the cards that look the coolest and sound the best and you know, hope you get the, uh, the luck of the draw on your side, which a lot of times you will. Uh, so it is uh, kind of equal mix of luck and skill. Uh, you can have a great strategy, know all the synergies, and if you have bad draws, then you're just out of luck and you're gonna lose. Um, at the same time, somebody who's lucky uh, may not win against somebody who has a great strategy. Um, the six superheroes are good. Um, they're very specific for this set. So for example, I wouldn't necessarily play Catwoman if I wasn't using this expansion. So she's once during each of your turns, if you control four or more rotated cards, gain the top card of the main deck. Uh, so that's pretty powerful. You get free card. Uh, but if you're not using the Birds of Prey expansion, it would be next to useless. Uh, so that's it in a nutshell. Um, that's basically how you play the game. It's a simple game to play, but don't don't discount the simplicity. 
uh, for fun because, um, you know, we love complex games. Uh, Pandemic Legacy is one of our favorites. Uh, Scythe is a favorite uh, that we like to bring to the table. Uh, there's a lot of games that we do play that are more complex, but this is a lot of fun. And honestly, uh, this comes to the table a lot. Uh, Binding of Isaac, um, which is a new card game um, that we got, uh, has been coming to the table a lot as well. And that's another one that's fairly simple, but just a lot of fun. So this is the Birds of Prey uh, expansion for the DC deck building game. Um, if you are new to the DC deck building game, uh, I would suggest you start with Teen Titans uh, as your first purchase. It's the fourth one. Uh, it is, in my opinion, probably the most fun and the best. Uh, that is what we started with. Uh, and then we kind of branched out from there. We actually went backwards. We got that, then we got Forever Evil, then we got Heroes Unite, and then the, the last one we purchased was actually the first one that they came out with, which is the original set, uh, just the base DC deck building game. Uh, all four of them are great in their own way, but Teen Titans um, really kind of takes it to the next level with ongoing cards. An ongoing card is a card that sits in front of you for the entire game, usually. Um, and you can, typically you can do one of two things. It'll either sit in front of you and trigger an effect if a certain condition's met. Uh, so for example, it might say, if you play three villains this turn, gain two power, uh, that's always active. Uh, another one might say, if you discard this card, you can draw two cards. Uh, or if you discard this card, you can destroy a card. Um, so those ongoing cards sit in front of you, and Teen Titans has, has a ton of them. When you mix Teen Titans with Birds of Prey, by the end of the game, you're going to end up with 10, 12, 15 ongoing cards sitting in front of you. Uh, so it can get a little heavy sometimes trying to remember what the heck you got going on. Uh, so that's it in a nutshell. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I did this specifically because of the Birds of Prey movie uh, trailer that came out, so I figured this is a good time to uh, bust this guy out. The Birds of Prey expansion came out in 2017. This is expansion number six. I believe they're currently on number eight, if uh, my memory serves me right. Anyways, uh, check it out if you like deck building games or card games. DC Deck Builder is a great one. Um, I love it. It's simple. It's fun. It's exciting. It's great for new players. It's almost like a gateway game uh, for someone that's used to, you know, typical Monopoly or Sorry or Yahtzee and those kind of games. Uh, this is a new concept for a lot of people uh, that aren't into the deck building card games. So anyways, if you like the video, click like, click subscribe. We're going to be putting out new content very frequently. Uh, we have an upcoming video talking about villains and how to create them in your Dungeons and Dragons game. So that should be a lot of fun. Until next time, see you later. This is Middle-Aged Nerd signing out.